Welcome to The Mischief, I'm Balan, and this is Engineer's Life 2, and we're going to be continuing on with getting a few things done. Uh, yeah, so I've updated the pack again, I'm on the most recent version, things are looking good. Uh, I, I also harvested a few things. I've got these uh, floor mats, which have connected textures, and they are these, these ones only work for um, players. Which is really nice now. I don't actually need to click when I go through the doors and they both open and close instead of just the one. I overlooked that mod. Um, and I'm sure there's plenty more mods in this pack that I'm overlooking that I need to do uh, or cover. I also planted some sunny blossom trees out here. I planted one of the uh, these uh, swamp willow logs, which I thought was appropriate near the water. Uh, as you can see, it's already kind of like dipped a little bit down in there. I didn't plant it like that. I just planted the sapling and let it grow naturally. It's really cool. Uh, putting the sugar cane around here has been beneficial. I've been getting all the, the sugar cane I need. Uh, I did add in some storage drawers around around the outside uh, on both sides, but I have not done much beyond that. Uh, at the very least, I can store the stuff out here in a lot more, or, well, bigger quantities than I could inside the house. Um, I also, uh, let's see, uh, I added a secret passage down into the mining tunnels down below it basically it's a framed trap door which uses the uh, framed blocks mod it's sort of like block craftery it's pretty much the same thing really uh, and i just clicked on it with the uh, the same thing as this the swamp willow uh planks and i click that on there and i can go downstairs into the uh, underground instead of going all the way around so it's just a bit of a shortcut but it's a little hidden one so i don't need to uh worry about it much i did find a little bit of a glitch so if you run into this problem um <laughs> the one of the embellished craft chairs if you click on these and sit on them it's fine but if you log out of the game while sitting on one of these things and log back into the game you will appear a half like down one block and i was in the world instead of dismounting from the chair and pressing shift because i was actually still in the chair i hit jump and then everything in the world was off by a half block. So then these doors were like uh, opening the top half and not the bottom. My weapons were kind of working really weirdly. Everything was just kind of off by a bit. So I recommend if you do something silly like that, just make sure that you hit sneak to, to get off the chair properly and don't try hitting jump to get out of the floor. Um, <laughs> that's all. I mean, it's not really a, a major bug or anything like that, but it did really mess me up for a for a little bit there um so yeah we we've got plenty of stuff i, I made a list a to-do list and i realize this is the word that not the proper mod to do this with uh this is just minecraft signs there is actually some stuff in here i think i can use with uh supplementaries that i can make a better result for but this is just my temporary uh option well let's take a look fishing results um i went out and did a, a whole lot more fishing uh because I had my enchanted fishing rod, you know, my Neptunium one, and I enchanted it, and it had all those benefits on it. Oh, it was a delight. It it made things go so much faster now that I've got that enchanting room upstairs. So uh, I went out, and in a, a fraction of the time, I was able to get all these results. I, I, I got uh, nine Neptune's bounty chests, because this is one of them here. Uh, and in those, I got all this stuff here which is just fabulous, you know, so I can, at the very least, I can finish off whoop, the armor set there. I now have the complete Neptunium uh, set up. Um, I switched out my weapon. Uh, you probably remember, where is it? Uh, this one here? Yeah, my, my diamond spear. Still great. Still good. It, it, it reaches farther and I can use it on, on my pony, but I decided to go with that javelin and it's a cavalier three loyalty three so now when i use this it comes back uh, basically i've got 1300 uses of this thing and it it's it's like a bow uh but if i miss <laughs> here i'll show you what happens if i miss and I, I i'm shooting off into the void or something like that it'll be a bit before i see that there we go but it does come back and it is you know practically free in comparison to uh, arrows so it, it it's pretty good but it doesn't do the damage that it says that it does it says you know like plus 10 percent attack damage is 8.5 why then does it take me like five hits with this thing at fully charged on a skeleton to finally kill it i mean really but anyway 
It's still, I, I added Cavalier 3 so I can use it on my horse and I don't need to carry around the spear at the same time. Um, I did upgrade my uh, my regular hatchets um, for like upgrading tools. Oh shoot, I thought I had one in my backpack. Oh, it's because it's in here. Um, there we go, this is all my Tetra stuff. I've got a diamond axe now so that that can uh, be a higher level because that's what's required for the, the warped tool sets. So that's something to take into account. If you decide to upgrade your tools with wooden handles, uh, specifically the warped wood, you'll need to do that. Uh, my warped recurve bow now has power four on it because I've been playing around with the enchantments. I'll go over that in the future. Um, but the fishing results, that's, that's done. I'm going to leave the chest here for now until I can get that sorted off camera. Uh, but I've got geodes as well. Geodes are really cool. Uh, I, I upgraded my hammers, by the way, with blackstone uh, from the nether, which if you don't know what blackstone is, it's like this stuff here, but without the, the gold marks in it, just, just gilded blackstone, which I don't think I actually grabbed any. Do I have it in here? I do have some. All right. I should probably take that out and put it in with the, the nether chest stuff. Um, there we go. But I have some blackstone, and that will upgrade your hammers as long as you use it on both uh, heads of it to the next tier, which now you can see it's a, a level four hammer. To get any higher than this, I think, I think I'm gonna have to go uh, looking for tetra uh, places underground in cold biomes. And this this is not cold biomes. Even in, in winter times, don't count. And I haven't been down there in a while. Um, I will have to look for like a mountainous or a taiga. So with this in mind, I've been doing a whole bunch of strip mining down below. I found a bunch of geodes, and if you don't know what strip mining is, well, that's vanilla 101 stuff, but uh, geodes are just random drops that you get from breaking stone most of the time, and if you have a hammer, you can take it like this, and you notice when I'm not looking at it, there's no marks around it. When I look at it, whoop, you can see it says level 2 hammer is required in order to smash this into its resulting cool item of choice. Now, uh, in my inventory, I only have a market and a green sleeping bag, everything else on my hotbar. So let's right click and smash. I got two redstone dust from that. And you know that I've got a whole bunch of these things in here and I'm getting all sorts of rewards by breaking these open. Oh, and I'm also settling the modules on my hammers, allowing on um, my hammer, allowing me to upgrade it further. Uh, I think, how many more of these do I have? There we go. That that should finish him off. And and that's it. Done. <laughs> I can put this away. And this is the results that I got from those. I got diamonds. I got pristine lapis and regular lapis. Now here's the thing. If you are upgrading something with lapis, it'll give you one benefit. With pristine, it'll give you that same benefit with a little bit more benefit. But the drawback is, and this is a big but. Um, yes, I said big but. Uh, the... <laughs> The drawback is that uh, you have to repair with those pristine versions in order for them to work properly. So that could be a major drawback if you don't have a lot of those pristine items. But it can be really beneficial nonetheless. So yeah, so a little bit of a nom. Uh, and I've got more things to do. That That's the geodes there. I've got a market to place down. All right, so anyway, as I was saying before, I got rudely interrupted by all sorts of mob spawns everywhere, which I, I do need to fix that up. I just I just really hate putting out torches everywhere, but I have some ideas on how we can fix that. Uh, for now, though, uh, you'll notice that I did put a bunch of, like, waterlogged stairs around here, so it's just this nice kind of, like, watery effect, and I can walk around here without worrying about it. Um, oops, i got to stop letting mobs in. I did like that, uh, but I need to put down this the market and i don't know what's going to happen if the guy's going to come up the guy's going to fall through there we go so we now have a swap o -matic market uh farmer's market as it is <laughs> in this area here which i think is pretty appropriate that might attract some zombies maybe i i don't know but you didn't seem bothered by it did you no you weren't so unless i've got the door open i think they're going to leave them alone Two more things that I wanted to do, or one more thing I wanted to do before I got the, uh, to the engineering part of this, where we start going through the engineering quest chapter, and that is making a controller uh, for storage drawers, a drawer controller. Uh, I wanted one of those, and I want trim. Now, what trim? I don't think it really makes a big difference, 
But in this case, I'm going to do the dark oak trim just because I'm going to want the um, uh, the the color in case it's visible to be that dark brown because that's pretty much what I'm going for for a lot of the theme of my builds. Oh right, I forgot. I need to make a couple of these. There we go. And then I can make the drawer controller, which shouldn't be a problem. There we go. One drawer controller. And then I just need to connect this, probably via underground methods, to all of the drawers in the uh, in the garden area. And then I can just click on the controller instead of clicking on every single drawer. Because uh, let me show you what I'm currently doing. And then you're probably going to be like, oh yeah, that is, that is kind of a pain, and I wouldn't want to do that either. <laughs> Uh, what I do want to do though is try and put this in a place where everything can connect um, but at the same time I don't want it to be just really in the way. I, now I realize that, that this guy's kind of in the way. Maybe because I could put it right here and it should still match okay with everything and I just stand, stood on that. Oops. Okay well I can... no. That's not what I wanted. All right, so maybe this will work back here, and it's not quite, it's not, it's actually not visible at all. Um, and just for the purposes of this temporarily, I need you to move. <laughs> and what I'm going to do is replace these under bricks. Uh, basically, this here, uh, let's break one of them so you can see. Actually, I might break this one too, just so I can grab that other one. Um, but the idea here is that I put down some trim. There we go. And I just have that go down one more block, comes down under here, and then just connects underneath to this set. What I'm going to do is probably replace this one here. And that, I don't know where that block just went. That's outside. Okay, there we go. I like being able to go through the windows. It's kind of nice. But then uh, if it connects underground to this, and underground and to that, all I need to do is uh, to put stuff away, like this industrial hemp fiber, I then just click on here, uh, or just hold right click a few for a few of those swipes of my hand, and everything that is in these drawers uh, will go in there. Now, if I have stuff that doesn't go in there, like this rotten flesh, it might take more. It might. And fill up these blank spots, which I, I don't know if I like that, but I'm, I might spread these out a bit, like take one of these, put that in there. Um, hmm. Take one of these, put that there. Ow. Take one of these. I don't know why I'm I that hurt. Am I going to end up hurting myself because of the um of that trying to actually harvest these things? I don't know. All right, so I will be back once I've uh dug out a space and uh refilled it with dark oak trim. So, be back in a moment. Okay, I'm back and this should connect all the trim together and just to ensure that that is correct what I can do because I'm gonna actually need an, an actual hoe <laughs> because this keeps turning it into path and then making it one of those indented versions it, it doesn't actually turn it into farmland unless it's grass first for some reason so you see so it, yeah then and I don't I don't want that to happen so I will need to fix that but otherwise Everything should be fine now, and just to prove that, let's actually grab this. I will use my lunchbox to harvest some things and grab a whole bunch of stuff. All right, I have so much stuff that I can't even put it away. So what do I do now? I go over to the main controller. And you just right click a few times and pow, it all gets put away. Oh, how wonderful is that? And I can just pick up all this stuff that I had extra of, right click, and it all goes into the controllers according to where the stuff is. Oh, it's so nice. It's so nice. Oh my gosh. And it would be even nicer if I had this lined up with all of the stuff along the side so it's exactly what it's supposed to be. But instead, it's it's like off center. Like this, this is wheat, which is here and here, and then lettuce. And then, yeah, you get the idea. It's like offset by a few rows. But still, it gives me the idea what these things are if I really need to. And I have a lot of storage in here. And then I can put down this market man here. 
Welcome back, Swapomatic. And then I can still just right click behind him. Cool. That worked out pretty darn good. Now I just need to go and get a hoe. And there we go. Just kind of hanging up my uh, that hoe tool there above the door so that I have it should I mess up like that again. <laughs> oh, gosh, that sometimes this stuff can be really <laughs> fidgety. But, you know, that's how Minecraft is with a lot of stuff. Anyway. Uh, let's switch these out and we're on to the con engineering part because I've completed all the, my to-do list that I had. So let's get that off of there and we're, we're going to get back into the questing with this. Yes, I, I currently have some stuff over there for uh, creosote, which actually I should go grab that. Ow, duck on it. I just want this. Get, get, get out of here. There's so many skeletons. There's so many skeletons. Ow, one, two... Three. Oh, and I missed, of course. <laughs> and another spider's coming up. Oh boy. Okay, so I should have thought this through. Uh, four hits. Yeah, that's. And I'm getting attacked by these guys. <laughs> Let's just grab this stuff and get out of here. I, I got what I needed, which was the creosote. Um, in fact, while I think of it, let's salvage this. Oh, I got string. Nice. First time I actually got string from uh, one of the bows, but I'm trying to up my skill whenever I possibly can. There we go. Treated wood planks. 84%. I need 64 of those. Oh, okay. Well, I just need a little bit more then. Let's... I'm sure I'm going to end up using them uh, regardless. So let's do this. And that completes that quest. I still have two, thousand, two buckets left, which I'm fine with that. Next. Oh, we get... A free crate, a chest upgrade, an emerald, and a stone. Okay, that was actually pretty cool. Um, I, wait, did that say it salvages? Into 16 bottle-o enchanting? Whoa, that's interesting. So if I get some kind of emerald farm going, then I could potentially... Oh, emerald comb. Turn it into an XP farm. And honey. Oh. Oh, I'm going to really have to get some bees going soon. I, I just I just feel it. <laughs> um, I do have another wooden storage crate. Let's just put it up here for now because I, do, I don't really need the space, but it can look like it's some kind of support <laughs> for the room, I guess. All right. Uh, wooden storage crate, which it just gave me one. That's kind of weird. A storage crate is a standard size storage block, 27 spaces. It keeps its inventory when broken, as we well know. And I have a reinforced storage crate, which, um, let me put this coin away. I will grab the one in my backpack. That completed the quest. Excellent. And then we can see that one. Reinforced storage crate acts the same as the wooden one, but it's blast proof, which, which is really important. <laughs> I find that very, very important. All right. And next we've got labeled crates, which I don't know if the, the issue with this has been fixed. These were deleting contents before, but I, we can test that. The label crate is a double-sized storage block that has a slot in its UI to display on the front of the crate, which is kind of cool. Uh, it's looks like it's also single-space metal bar and old industrial wood planks. Okay. How are those? Oh, charcoal plus treated wood. Interesting. Um, I should have some charcoal. No, that's coal. I thought I had charcoal. I guess I don't. Um, so let's take a little bit of some of the wood that I have and start making some. And put these out. Put this in there. There we go. Hello, zombie. How are you? All right. Metal bars. They're made just from three iron ingots. And I was messing around with some of these earlier. Um, let's see in my building chest here. I made a bunch of these like steel poles and the extensions from them and stuff, which are cool. Uh, but one, two, three, four, I think, because I've already made these. Um, I shouldn't need any more of them. I don't, I don't think. Yeah, four of them should do. And then I just need the result from this out here. Oh, it's daytime. Yay. Because usually when I go outside, it's nighttime and everything is trying to kill me. Charcoal. Oh, thank goodness. Let's put the jerry can in there. That's that's actually full, so I might as well take a few charcoal just for this use. 
Okay, there we go. I've made old industrial wood planks and now to make the labeled crate, which uh, Zero Sots used 54 free. Oh, zero item, total items stored. Oh, so it stores stuff just like the other ones? Okay, and then control shift. Storage crate with 9 by 6 slots and a built-in item frame at the front. Place an item into the frame slot at the bottom right of the UI to define the shown label. Okay, let's put this down here. Oh, and that that's what that is for there. Okay, cool. Neat. All right, so let's let's test this out, shall we? We're going to put some stuff in here and see if it actually retains it. Heck, I'll even put that in the corner. There we go. It, it's the, the testing twine chest says that it requires wood and I'm using a tetra tool so we'll we'll find out shall we all right so it didn't d get deleted it does say that there are three slots used and everything's still in it looks like the the issues have been fixed with the labeled crate and I'm a fan of this because these hold a lot more <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> which is nice considering that I'm using these ones but I I don't know if it's blast resistant though it did use iron all right, we've got wooden barrels, which can store 12 buckets of a liquid for future use, but cannot hold lot hot liquids or gases, sort of like um, uh, lava or gases. I, I don't know what gases might be in here, but it gets, ooh, gets a six iron grit. Metal barrel is the, one of its dependents. All right, which this one here does 12 buckets, but it can be hot or a gas, and that gets us even more. Oh, that's nice. Okay, so let's do one of those. And then we'll actually do the metal barrel as well. All right, so I just need some treated wood planks and some slabs to make that. That's not a bad thing at all. Whoops, this one here. There we go, one wooden barrel, done. And what about the metal barrel? That requires iron sheet metal. That's, that's a lot of iron, but I'm going to do it anyway. Let's take these blocks of iron out of here. Un compress them. Uh, I will need my engineer's hammer to make these. Unless, wait, do I have any? No, I don't. I was just checking to see if I had any of the um, the, sh the sheets, oh, sheet metal already. Four. What is it? Four of those to make? Four of those, which I'm going to need more of. So I'm going to need eight. Ooh, 16 ingots. Pow. Just for this. Okay. Let's do this, and then we'll do it again, and then I can make some slabs, and then I can make the metal barrel. There we go. Got it. All right, that actually is pretty useful. Um, let's grab these. We get a bunch of grits, which previously, if you were playing immersive engineering without this mod pack uh, changing things, you would just take your uh, engineering engineer's hammer to start with, in a crafting grid with like iron ore or something like that and you'd get iron grit now you've got to have a crusher or a centrifuge with iron comb or a fluid sieving machine <laughs> yeah in order to get these it, it's a bit more intense but i am glad that i have some of these to start with because the copper gold iron actually i might be able to make some um alloys with those maybe i don't know yet we'll we'll find out for now though let's make a bunch of tools so this is just going to be like setting up stuff uh by the end of this episode i'm expecting that i'll probably have a bunch of these things uh like the basics going on and then i'm thinking i'm going to start building a um like a little workshop area over there at least that's kind of the plan so let's let's continue on here we need tools engineers tools there's a uh, uh, wire cutters uh, let's do this and engineer screwdriver. Oh, wow. That's actually pretty easy with this. I can make screwdriver and then a couple of these and this, uh, makes engineers wire cutters. I'm going to need something to put these in, which I have a feeling we're getting close to look at that. The engineer's toolbox, which I remember when it first came out, it was so glitchy. It just devoured everything that you put in it. It was, it was pretty scary to use. You need a toolbox to carry your tools in along with some food and other items. There we go. Three aluminum plates to make the engineer's toolbox. Oh, I do need some dye, uh, which shouldn't be a problem because I've been keeping my dye in this one chest over here. And then I now can make this. Uh, just make sure that your wooden storage crate doesn't have anything in it. 
before you do this because it might delete the contents. So Engineer's Toolbox is basically another chest that, oh wait, I thought you, you can sneak click to place it and then open it. And then I don't know what it takes to break. Is it, it is a pick. Okay. Otherwise you right click and you can just put your stuff in there. Um, I might needing, I might need those at some point. I'll let it self finish, but a kinetic dynamo is going to be very important as well as an alloy kiln. Oh, that's really important. We need this. Uh, and we're going to need bricks and sandstone. Do I have, I have sandstone and I've got a bunch of bricks. I was making more. There we go. I think I can make this one. Oops, uh, let's make a bunch too. I need eight total, and that should do it. Uh, so what this does is it allows you to make uh, an alloy furnace. Um, I'm actually going to do it, I'm going to put it right here for the moment. This is going to get a little bit chunky because it's, I'm building a multi-block structure in the house, right? But not to worry, I take out my hammer, and I right click on it, and pow, I get this little uh, structure. Then you can open it, you can put in two different alloys, and it will smelt them uh, together to make something else. If you want to see the recipes, you can do it in here. Oh, I don't need them to be grits. That's nice. So I can make Corinthian, I can make Constantan, which I have no idea if this is going to be any good for any of my tools or anything. Break this for putting it where we need it later on over here by where that zombie is going to be in what I'm going to call the workshop. There we go. Get some more ingots, which is nice. The engineer's crafting table. This is, of course, going to replace the crafting table we have here in the workshop. I think I'm going to keep this one here, though, just because I, I like having the, the vanilla one in this place. But the engineer's crafting table, it's a special table with a small internal inventory and holds items in crafting spaces instead of putting them back in your inventory when closing the table, which is kind of cool. And I got an emerald for uh, a follow-up here. Let's put that on the list. Now I should be able to make it, no problem. All right, engineer's table, quest complete. We're just kind of ripping through the quest today, but these are kind of relatively early on quests. Here, let me, let me fix this guy here. Get get wrecked. Thank you for, for your donation. But as I was saying, we're kind of ripping through the quests today, uh, but this is fine. These are all introductory quests. Really? Can you guys go burn somewhere else, please? I definitely need to fix that. Now, I did notice that there's a way to do that right here. Powered lantern. Lantern that when provided RF, which is a redstone flux or a, a power source, creates as much light as a torch, but stops mobs spawning within a 32 block radius. <laughs> this is going to be really important. <laughs> We're going to need to have a bunch of these around. Um, and then we get a bunch of those uh, as rewards, which I find really nice. Let's take that off there. But look, it requires vacuum tubes. You can only make those in engineers' workbenches. So I feel that I can't make that yet until we've gone to this one. Oh, what is this? A metal crafting table. I have not done this one. All right, well, let's, let's do the engineer's workbench. Put that on the list. A custom crafting table that allows you to make special recipes from blueprints that can be made and found in villages in the world. There we go, engineer's workbench, uh, which it looks really cool. I really like the uh, the design of it because uh, it once you put a blueprint in it, which don't I have a blueprint? Yeah, I do. There we go. Put a blueprint in it. It shows up on here, and it, it tells you what they are. Like this is uh, the bullets blueprint, I believe. Yep, we've got different bullets on there. It's kind of just hanging off on the side, and if you put things in the places on here, I think... Yeah, they actually show up on the table now, which I, it's just really cool. It's it's a neat thing. There we go. I got iron ingot, engineer's blueprints, engineer's blocks. Okay, let's go with the blueprints. I've got those. These blueprints are a few but critical sets that you can use in the engineer's workbench. Mods and components blueprints, but I, I don't have those. Oh, I guess it, it just counts it as any blueprint because they all have similar MBTs. So I guess I get some paper back. <laughs> but it does make sense. Molds and components, which I do need those. So let's do molds, and that's specialized projectiles, arc furnace, crafting components. There we go. All right, I did not have any aluminum ready made, so I had to actually smelt some up. But that's okay. It's not that bad. Um, so there's another iron plate. 
with this I can move this over and make the molds print and this one for crafting components which they change how things uh, are made in here. So if I put in crafting components, I can now make vacuum tubes, circuit boards, iron mechanical components, and steel mechanical components. All right, next things I see, there's, there's a lot of fun in here. Um, specifically things I'm going to need to make. Powered lanterns are one, one of the things I'm going to need to make. So that's going to go on my to-do list. Another thing, floodlights. But uh, the, both of these require power. Uh, so... I also realized that a metal press is something that's going to really reduce my um, the amount of items that I need to make stuff. So let's do the press molds. We're going to want each of these different molds to be made here. So I'm going to put each of these on my to-do list, and then I'm going to make those and hopefully get some rewards. And that's, that doesn't mean that these are going to just instantly I can start making everything that I want, because this is what I want, the metal press. I'm going to need to head out this way to get to it, which isn't too bad, honestly. There, a bunch of these blocks are going to be made along the way. At least these ones here uh, are going to be made along the way. Oh, and we've got water wheels. But I need to come up from this. Magma blocks? I need nine magma blocks? Don't I have nine magma blocks? I don't have any? Whoa, okay. I thought I had some. Huh, okay. That's definitely something I'm going to need to pick up. And that will allow me to make a blast furnace, which also allows me to make steel and so on. Uh, that's going to be pretty darn important, especially since I need that in order to make water wheels. I suppose I can go this route and make windmills, but I think it, yeah, the kinetic dynamo, that isn't that bad. That requires a copper coil and a bunch of iron, and that's just a bunch of copper wrapped around sticks that have been snipped into that. Yeah, I'm going to need a bunch of copper. Uh, smelt it up. That makes me think that right now I need to take I've got 63 more. How much do I have? I've got a, over a stack of copper. Hmm. I'm going to smelt up another half stack just to be sure and also increase my still my skills. Alright, let's see. Engineer's blocks. Task. The blocks surrounding this quest are critical pieces in the multi-block structures of immersive engineering. That That's all it is and I get free food. <laughs> okay. And then you've got this the uh, the projector and I I had some input on this and it, it came out really really well it, I'm I'm really pleased with how they did this the projector will be a critical item when you go to build multi block machines and this kind of had like um uh, almost a a Bioshock vibe about it which a lot of this mod does but um it, it kind of had that projector old school uh, black and white type feel. Uh, where everything's kind of shaky and glitchy and stuff. And it, and they did really well with uh, bringing it to life in the way that they did. Um, but y you can use this to display the um, uh, the multi-block, uh, a multi-block structure. Sort of like that little kiln that I did. It would actually put like a ghost image of the bottom layer. We'd place all the blocks here. And if something was in the wrong place, it would highlight improperly. Uh, and then it once we complete a layer, we can do the next layer up. And uh, once complete, it'll, you know, stop. And that's it. it it's just, uh, for, if you've played Batania or anything like that, it's pretty darn cool. There we go. One projector. And if you want, let's see, I think I've got the books over here. You take the manual of the item you want to display. And let's say the kiln, the alloy kiln, right? I'm on this page of it. So in order to have that display, you then craft this with this. At least that's how it used to be. Right click to open menu. Oh. <gasps> oh, that's changed. Okay, that's that's actually much nicer. I like that a lot more. It used to be that you'd go to the page of the book, then you'd craft it with that book. Uh, you'd get the book back, and then the projector would just be, you know, whatever the item was. Then you could just recraft it again with whatever the item is that you wanted it to be. So this is a... This is a nice change. I like this. Okay. This furnace. Oh, this is all alloy kiln. There we go. That. So there we go. Now if I click, sneak click, projection mode. Uh, it, it does not. Okay. I have no idea what it, oh, I need, didn't, I didn't hit confirm. Okay. This is me learning stuff again. Uh, mirror rotated south counterclockwise. Oh, wow. Neat. And so there you go. Yeah. It's sort of like the old school um 
projectors, it, it kind of has a, a bit of a flicker to it. Then I can click. Is it sneak click? There you go. No, no. Is what is it to to get it to stay? There we go. So it was just right click, and it just shows the bottom layer. So if I grab those kiln bricks and place it, it actually shows me which where they go when I hold them. This is pretty cool. Actually, that was that was poorly placed. <laughs> I already dropped the ball here. <laughs> and put this in the wrong spot. I had no idea that they had uh, updates to the... I don't know if this is an update to it. This is Immersive Petroleum. The, they they definitely changed that. That's that's a big switch. That That is a, a, a nice change. I like that a lot. And there you go. See, it says green. It's all good. You got it. Congratulations. Okay, and that's... Oh, five XP levels. I'm going to save that. I'm at level 31 right now. Um... And let's see, oh, oh, so many options, but I, I know that this is important. If I make this, everything else becomes cheaper to make. So we're definitely going to go for the metal press as our first project, though it does require power. And that is kind of a bummer. So maybe that's not going to be our first project because we need a power source, which means a windmill is likely going to be what we use. So I think if I make uh, like a, a factory floor over here, I could probably just use some base materials for now and then we can switch it out with uh, concrete later on because um, I think Immersive has, let's see, looking up Crete, we've got hempcrete, we've got concrete, we've got leaded concrete, which is like blast resistance stuff. Um, and we can use some of this for like the flooring, uh, which I think gives a, a speed buff when you walk on it as well, which is kind of cool. But um, that, that's not anything that I'll be able to make straight away. So I think what I'm going to do, though, is head for the windmill, which is going to require that. We need to make that kinetic dynamo first. Ah, getting ahead of myself. Okay, first I need to make a whole lot of copper plates. Then, which my hammer is about busted, I need to take those plates and I need to turn them into wires. Boop. And then I need to make a copper coil, which requires a bunch of sticks. So let me grab a bunch of those. And I should take that projector off there, uh, be able to make LV wire coils. One, two of those. Let's make two sets, because that's just going to be really key there. Grab a couple iron ingots, because I believe that the copper coil block is used in a lot of different things. Uh, yes. Yes, it is. Specifically, the kin kinetic dynamo is what I want it to be used for most. Um, so I might as well just make two, though, of these copper coil blocks. There we go. And then I can make two kinetic dynamos and get extra power, but I think all I'm going to want to do here is just get the ingredients for just one for now. There we go. One kinetic dynamo. And this basically will generate power provided there is some kind of, uh, in this case, rotational force going into it. So it sounds sort of like create, but not quite. Um, let's put the sticks away. And I need to then proceed, grabbing these items, uh, to the windmill, which is going to be really important. It is used to generate redstone flux, or power, when connected to a kinetic dynamo. Building another windmill of any type in close proximity, up to seven blocks in front of it, will reduce its speed. Uh, funny thing is, you can just put one next to it like 90 degrees <laughs> and it'll be fine um but that's, that's that's splitting hairs you know if you really want to go nuts and make some weird conglomeration looking thing but i think one of them will be fine for just kind of powering uh some of our lanterns the powered lanterns around here i'm not sure how much these use um it doesn't really say on there i bet you if i looked in the freaking manual it would tell me but let's look up the the windmill we need to make those first so i uh, going to need windmill blades, which is going to be a whole bunch of sticks, treated sticks and treated planks. All right, I'm on the job. Hey, that looks pretty good. All right, I now have eight windmill blades. Uh, I'm actually pretty happy with that number. There's iron grit that I got there. That was nice. Oh, and I've got more cooked mutton. Excellent. I'll put that in my, uh, my cheap lunchbox. So next we need to make windmill blades, which is eight of those plus an iron ingot, which I think, did I just run out of iron? That's kind of crazy. Um, I need to smelt up some more. I've got several stacks of it, so I might as well smelt a couple right now. Uh, put a stack in here. 
stack in here, get my, my smelting XP up. And while I'm doing this, I can take some of the nuggets that I've got and make another ingot. Then use that to make a windmill blade. Excellent. Now I've got the kinetic dynamo, windmill, but that's not all that I'm going to need. That's going to generate power, but the power isn't going anywhere. So it needs to be stored or, uh, you know, connected to some kind of power line. We're going to need LV wire coils. Yeah, a bunch of those. In fact, oh, I used it to make the copper coil blocks already. Oh, gosh, I'm going to need more copper. Yeah, mining. It's, it's a thing in here. So I'm going to take these. I'm going to make a bunch of plates with what I have left. That used up all of my hammer. I am sad. And then use this to make a bunch of copper wire. And then use that to make, yet again, more of these copper coils. There we go. I'm going to need a bunch of those to start with. 12 should be okay. With uh, copper coils, you can actually use them to go up to, I believe, 16 blocks away from uh, a source that you connect it to before it will break. Um, and yes, I'm getting smithing XP, which is getting up there. I've got a ways to go before I can uh, actually level anything. I'm almost at level 20, though, so that's kind of cool. About to get level 20 smithing. Does that mean I can do gold? That is level 30. <sighs> okay, it'll be, it's a ways off, but more things are going to be smelted as I progress in this. Yay, smithing level up. All right, an LV capacitor. That doesn't even require a copper coil, I'm surprised. Two copper ingots, one lead ingot, three iron, two treated wood planks, and a redstone dust. An LV capacitor. So we now have a battery. We have uh, a windmill with a kinetic dynamo allowing us to ultimately create power and then we just need a way of getting the power from the dynamo into the capacitor now we could just put the capacitor right on top of the kinetic dynamo not sure if i really want to do that because often i want to uh, plug into multiple locations of a capacitor with that uh, so you know like just branch off of this and having it connected to that directly is a little bit weird so we're going to still follow this get a bunch more loot lv wire coil got those oh which can power up to 2048 RF or power before burning out and needing to be replaced. It will shock you if it's touched because these are just open wires. These are like, uh, if you want to compare it with something at home, it's nothing like, uh, sort of like a bare wire without the plastic coating on it <laughs> or the insulated uh, coating on it. Insulated LV wire coil is the same thing, but it requires tough fabric, which is a bunch of... Uh, uh, the industrial hemp fiber plus a stick in order to do that. And I might do that as I progress with my, my gardening. But more important, so I need an LV wire connector so that I can actually, and the, um, the relays, so that I can actually uh, make these wires that I have here, the LV wire coils, connect from the dynamo to the capacitor. Uh, they don't just connect automatically. You need to uh, actually have connectors and relays in order to do so. Thankfully, I already had a bunch of terracotta from all the building that I was doing upstairs, so I can make these relatively easily. And they're not too bad uh, as expense, like three copper ingots and four terracotta gets you four LV wire connector connectors, which you can only have one connection uh, going to this at a time, but you will need multiples of them. Relays, on the other hand, can take as many connections as possible, but they will not input power into a station. So they're more like um, bridging the gap. So this actually gets me a really good start on how, uh, what or where to put a lot of this stuff. I actually like the caution hot wire sign. <laughs> that was a nice touch of a reward. Um, oh, and I got some copper back. Yay! There are wooden posts I can use. I will likely end up using these two. Oh, just by making those I get copper? That's nice. Two treated wood fence and stone brick. I happen to have two treated wood fence and multiple stone brick, so I'm going to make that right now. Let's make a new engineer's hammer because I broke my last one. And I'll put this here next to it. Put this down, and you can see it is now a large post. If I take this hammer, I can right click and it will put out this little arm. Then I can click attach to it and it will actually start attaching things and adjust to them appropriately, making these effectively power cable uh, lines or, or like, like telephone pole things, if you will. But there we go. I now get 
more supplies from that. Oh, so nice. So I think that's a pretty good start for me to get this stuff set up. So what I'm going to do is kind of between episodes here, because I've been drawing on about this for quite a lot. Um, I know it's raining right now, so I, I might well get attacked. Oh, it's it stopped. Sun's going down, but it stopped. So I, I'm going to kind of add in a workshop area. Probably going to be relatively open space uh, or open plan. I see some bees flying over there. Oh, I should go catch them. Um, but uh, I'm going to do this and we'll see if I can actually get maybe like a little windmill set up on top of it as well for like some bare bones power to start keeping the critters away from our base. Anyway, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this uh well, immersive engineering jaunt. <laughs> a little bit of a catch up of what I did before. I'll probably do a little bit of a time lapse for the next video. We'll see. But if uh, you did enjoy, please be sure to give a like, comment, subscribe. Uh, don't forget to hit that notification bell and uh, come visit us on Twitch. We stream probably about three times a week on average. So I'll see you guys next time. Bye.